what we're going to get into is symbols. And we might have to go over to the line too, because I noted some symbols over here uh, that we haven't talked about. Symbols and diagrams. Very, very, very important lecture, right? First thing, and I didn't run this off, so y'all need, might need to make notes, is what the designators for the different types of things. So if we see A, what does that mean it is? Or you need to note this, because I, like I said, B means it's a what, H means it's a, K means it's a relay, M means it's a for a directional control valve, S is for switches, V is for the valve itself, right, you understand, and Z is for the pneumatic surgeon. And if we don't understand these, then we won't be able to understand the actual schematics or the diagram. Are we okay? Any questions? Okay. So here's the first line. This is what we call the take place line. And these are actuators. Now, what they do, every actuator circuit has a number. So all the sensors and all the valves that belong to that actuator will start off with the same number. So notice over here on this, uh, the part C cylinder, they all start with what? One. So 1B1, this is a sensor, right? You understand that belongs to actuator number one. 1B2 one is a sensor that belongs to what? Actuator number two. 1V1, one this is a valve that belongs to, I'm sorry, 1V2, belongs to actuator number one. 1V3 one one is a valve that belongs to actuator number one. Because we're not, we hadn't, there's more valves on it than what's shown here. Now, B1 don't belong to an actuator, so it's, it don't have a number to follow, start it with, right? You understand? It does not belong to an actuator. Uh, here's these actuators over here. So this guy right here, this that used to extend uh, this guy down, this is actuator number three, right? You understand? And then this cylinder right here would be actuator number four. We okay? Now, normally when they lay these things out, and here's, here's are our symbols. So this one is a symbol for a service unit. Everybody okay? So what does a service unit uh, include? Uh, it includes a filter. So this is a fil filter. This is a regulator, and this is a gauge. So what they've done is they've taken three units and put them inside one, and we call that a service unit. Uh, this is a pressure switch with an analog output. Uh, this is a pressure regulator. Are you okay there? This is a digital pressure sensor. So notice it's got the little symbol of a switch in it. Uh, this is a one-way adjustable flow control valve. So when 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 the air flows in this direction, this is called a check valve. It's going to push that little old ball up, and it's going to move around without going through the flow control. When it comes down this direction, it, it's going to push the ball into the seat, so it can't go through this direction, so it's going to have to go through the flow control. You understand that? So these, these valves in pneumatics or fluid power, the valves that only let, flow, uh, only let the fluid flow in one direction is called a check valve. In electronics, we have diodes, and that's what diodes are. <laughs> They're check valves. Uh, this is an adjustable flow control valve without a check a valve. This is the vacuum generator. What's this little symbol right here? That's the suction cup. What's this little symbol right here? That's the muffler or the silencer. Everybody okay? What's this symbol right here? Now, the number of ways of a valve is the number of ports it has. Everybody understand that? So how many ways would this guy here have? Well, it's got one, two, three, four. It's a four-way valve. 
Then we specify the number of positions that valve can be put in. This valve can be put in two positions. We can have it in the position drone, which is its normal position. And what you got to visualize in this symbol, and that's what I was looking for my animation, is when we shift this thing over, this square is going to move over to here, right? Y'all understand that? So right now, the air would be flowing in port one and would be going out of port, port two. The return will be coming back from into port four and coming out port three. If I shift it over, then one is going to be connected to four and two is going to be connected to three. Y'all understand that? This has a watt. This is a symbol of a solenoid. So that means it's got a solenoid with a spring return. So that's the symbol for a spring. This right here is a symbol for a manual override. Now, when we talk about the valve, it's kind of strange. We talk off, we start off with the number of ways. So I'd say four. Then we talk, then we say the number of ports, two, and then we say way. <laughs> so it's kind of backwards. So we call this a four two way valve even though it's got four ways in two positions. We call this a four two-way valve, and that's just the nomenclature of the trade. That's the way you would buy this thing. Solenoid activation spring return with a manual override. So that would be that whole valve right there. The next one is a four two-way valve, double solenoid action with a manual, with manual override. And the last one is what we call a quick exhaust. So this guy here has its own exhaust and it exhausts real fast. So if we want something to move real fast, then we'll put this up by the cylinder itself and get a real fast exhaust, right? Does that make sense? Everybody okay? Uh, this is a symbol of a double acting cylinder. This is a symbol of a single acting cylinder with a spring return. This is what we call a rodless cylinder. Now a rodless cylinder, weigh it, so we call this a rod. This is called the piston. This is called the rod. That makes sense. Now, the problem with these things is when I push on this side, we push against more area. When I push it on this side, we have to subtract the rod. So, I mean, these guys can generate more force when you extend them than they do when you do what? Track them because force is equal to area times pressure. A rodless cylinder has no rod. So it'll generate both pressures going left or right. Well, how do we call motion? Well, what we how we call motion is either we put a band inside of the thing and it causes the band to move, and then whatever's going to move is attached to the band, or we put a big old magnet inside that thing. So the rod, so the piston is a big magnet, and then the cradle or whatever you're going to move rides on the outside and just attaches to the magnet. So when the magnet moves inside the rod, then the whole the actual uh, actuator modes. Okay, so let's pause and go back and look at. So let's. This is a diagram of the pick and place station. And notice what they do is they they divide it up into actuator circuits. So here comes my. By the way, this is the symbol for pressure, and all it is is a rectangle. The only thing difference between pneumatic pressure and hydraulic pressure. Anybody know? This is colored in. So hydraulic, this wouldn't be open. This would be color in. Uh, pneumatic, it's not colored in, right? You understand. So, but you still have a pressure regulator. You still might have a fresh a filter. Uh, this is our disconnect right here. So the this is labeled zero. So what does zero means? It means this this is act, this is the actuator that it runs, right? You understand. Uh, this is circuit number one. This is the feed cylinder. So this is the cylinder. So what they're doing on here, they're going from left to right. So you pretty much well know the cylinders because the first feed cylinder is the furthest to the left, and cylinder four is going to be the furthest to the right. That makes sense. Or actuator four. So notice we come up. They call this one v one. Now what is one v one? Well, it's got two cylinders. It's got one cylinder on it, on it, and they call it one m one. Right, you understand that. Uh, then we come up. These are valves. These are flow control valves. This belongs to cylinder number one, one V two, and one V three. And they're using meter out, so that means 
right now it's going to come up it's going to flow. Which way is it going to go? Well, it's going to push that little ball open, and it's going to go that way. So there's no restriction. Now, when this air comes flowing out, because the cylinder's moving that direction, or the rod's moving in that direction, it's going to push that little old check valve, so it's going to have to run flow control, so this is meter out. So if the check valves point away from the cylinder, it's meter out. If they point toward the cylinder, it's meter in. In pneumatics, we meter out. Now, why do we meter out? Because if you push it, if you meter in, right, you understand, it hits that cylinder, the cylinder moves, the air uncompresses. Then it's got to compress again. Then it moves and it uncompresses. So if we meter out, if we meter in on pneumatics, the cylinders would be what? Would be real jumpy. But if we meter out, then the flow control is trying to hold it and it's always pushing against the pressure, so you get a lot smoother movement in pneumatics. Uh, hydraulics, we can do it's, it, it's whoever, whatever the engineer prefers, meter in or meter out, don't make any difference because they don't compress. But pneumatics, we normally do what? Meter out. Here's actuator number two. So they're calling the vacuum generator an actuator. So here's the flow control valve. It's dual, cil it's dual, dual solenoid, right? Got four ways, four port. Uh, this solenoid actuates, pushes that direction, and that's what you got to do on these symbols is you got to visualize this whole thing doing what? Moving. So when this one actuates, it's going to take this block and push it over here. So now pressure, which is coming in on one, is going to go to four, right? If we push it on this direction, pressure would be over and go over to two. And then we come back through uh, exhaust. This, is, this line right here is the manifold. So all these valves are connected to the manifold, so they share the same what? They share the same pressure, and they they share the same exhaust. So here's circuit one. So everything inside circuit one starts, actuator circuit one starts with a what? A one. One, M1. So I know M says this is a solenoid, right? V is for what? Valve. From the power source, this is the first this is the first valve in a counter, so it's called number what? One. Uh your flow control, so that's valve one, so these are the seconds that they, they, they encounter, so they're calling these what? Two and three. And of course what they're using, they're using two to extend and three to retract. Then this is the actuator. It's called one A, that's the actuator. One B one, what's that? That's our sensor that senses it's what? Retracted. 1B2 is the sensor that senses what? Extended. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. Uh, we come up. This is circuit number two. Uh, 2M1, 2M2, uh, 2V1, 2V2, 2Z1. So this is an indicator. That's a pressure gauge, right? So the pressure gauges are Z. But it still belongs to what circuit? Circuit number two, right? You understand. Uh, come up here. This is actuator number two. Uh, this is a symbol for what? Muffler or silencer. Uh, this is a pressure sensor with an analog output, and this is the pressure switch that we're going to see. This one right here is not connected. This one right here is. Here's cylinder number three. This is the pickup cylinder. So this is the one that does what? Goes down and picks it up. Uh, what valve? Uh, this is controlled by solenoid 3M1 and 3. Uh, so 3M1 would cause it to do what? It would shift it over. So 3M1 would cause it to extend. 3M2 would cause it to what? Retract. Then we go up to the flow control valves using meter up, meter out. And here's the cylinder. Uh, then we move over to circuit four. Real straightforward. It's really neat the way they. And if we looked at the prints for the for the for the Festo line, they use the same nomenclature. So this is industry standard nomenclature for these prints that you're looking at, right? Uh, this is a rodless cylinder. Uh, here's the valve that controls that. It's a four two-way valve, solenoid actuated with manual manual uh, overrides. Four M1 because it belongs to what? Circuit four, right? You understand? 
uh, 4M1 would, would cause it, call, should cause the uh, cylinder to move to the right. Uh, 4M2 should cause the cylinder to move to the left. Or I should say piston. This is not a cylinder. Y'all see it? Well, they are cylinders. Come think about it. And then the flow control valves. So that's the whole pneumatic circuits, all four of the pneumatic circuits for the pick and play. But all the rest of them use the same symbol, right? So what do they usually do? Well, what 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 Amatro does and Festo does is it does it the way we read schematics. Normally we read schematics from left to right. So how do they do it? Well, they assign the numbers on how the, how the actuators are in the system, right? Left to what? Left to right. So just by looking at this, we can pretty much well know where the where the actuators are at. Are we okay? Anybody got any questions on that? Pretty straightforward, ain't it? Then we get into the electrical symbols. Knowing symbols is the name of the game, guys, and y'all gonna have to memorize these symbols. On test, you're not gonna be able to use this chart, these charts. Because this is something you need to look at. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Uh, first of all, when you see this diamond shape right here, that's going to be a pro some type of um, sensor, right? You understand that. Uh, what they do on these prints is they put the sensor inside a block. I know this is a solid state sensor because it's got three wires going to it. Now notice the way they're numbered. They're numbered one. Just let everything off. I'll shut it down. I got to come back over to my office. All right. So this is power is one and three. Three would be common. One is power, and four would be signal. Right? I understand that. Uh, this has got the solid block. By the way, these are the different types of sensors, and all you're doing is coming here and replacing these little symbols right here with what type of sensor it is. So all the sensors have the same symbol. Basic symbol. Look inside the box right here. See that thing right there? Well, what is this? That's a symbol for what? Inductive. This thing that looks like a crystal is a what? Ultrasonic. This one that's got the little LEDs in there, this is a Photoelectric. Now it doesn't tell you what type it is. It doesn't say okay. It's a. It doesn't tell you it's a through the beam. It doesn't tell you if it's a retro reflective or diffused. All we know it's just what. It's a photoelectric sensor. Uh, then the next one is for what Hall effect. So notice they show a little old magnet in here, north south. See the little magnet symbol, which would be I don't show it over here. See it? Yes or no? Uh, then the next one is for a watt capacitive. The next one's magnetic read. Now look, the Hall effect and the magnetic read look basically the same, but note what's the difference between the Hall? It's got three because it's electronic. The magnetic read only has what? Two, one and three. So it don't have a sensor output, but it still uses the same uh, pins. Uh, then this right here is a symbol of a watt. It's a symbol of an indicator lamp light everybody okay this is a symbol for a watt limit switch this is the symbol up here on the right this is for a selector switch don't understand what a selector switch is yes or no in motor controls we went over that uh, next is the symbol for a watt single acting solenoid what's next so next one will be for a double acting cylinder, right? With a this is actually the solenoid. This is not the valve. This is the solenoid. In in uh, unfortunately in fluid power, and we're talking about doing that is buying a set of solenoids. We're thinking about putting them on these trains, and that's what I need to tell Miss Wilson about. Uh, we're going to buy this, this electrical portion for these over here. We're not going to do it over there. So that way, so over in hydraulic fluid power, you had no solenoid. So since you didn't have any solenoids, you didn't see the symbol of the solenoid. So this is the actual symbol of the valve right there. 
these are the actual symbols for the solenoid, right? Understand. Uh, this is for normally open momentary contact push button. This is for the what? E stop. And this is for the relay contact. Now, don't get it confused because this has 1A1, 1A2, but notice up here, the electrical connections come in the top and the bottom. Uh, they do on the relay, but what's missing? See this little line right there? That little angled line right there? So that little angled sloped line right there means it's a what? It's a solenoid. This right here, if it don't have that little angled line, it means it's a relay coil. Are we okay? Yes or no? So these are the electrical symbols that we're going to deal with. These are, these are also what they use on the Festo line. Made by two different companies, by the way. Now this is PLC. So what we have on a PLC is we have inputs and we have outputs. Inputs are where we hook our sensors. Outputs are where we hook our either our actuators or something that controls an actuator, right? You all understand that, yes or no? Now, what Alan, what uh, what uh, what Siemens does is they start off by starting off I. So this is I, right? You understand? And then they say, okay, what module does this belong to? So Alan Bradley, if you had PLCs, Alan Bradley's modules moves in groups of sixteen. Uh, uh, Siemens moves in groups of eights. So that means I've got 16 inputs over there. Then some of them is going to be 10, 10.0, 10.2, 10.0, and then the other eight is going to be 11.0, right? You understand? Or I1.0. That's actually an I. That's not a one. So these are the actual inputs on the PLC. So I know right now this is the symbol of a push button, and I know it connects between power, and it, it goes over to input 0.0, .0 on the PLC that's running this line. Everybody okay? So these are the terminal board numbers right here. So input, input module 0, bit 0, goes up to what? Terminal board 0.0. .0. Everybody okay? So what they're doing is they just dropped off the inputs. And we'll see that the inputs go from 0, 0 1, and 2, right? So 3 and 4 is going to be what? Outputs. So on the terminal board, if it starts off with a 3 or a 4, it's going to be an output. If it starts off with a 0, 1, or 2, it's going to be an input. So what they've done on the terminal board is they left off I right there. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes or no? So that's the way that works. Are we okay? Huh? Okay, why don't you understand? Huh? Oh, physically you're tired? Okay. Unfortunately, we got to move on whether you're tired or not, right? By the way, in PLCs, as we've got, and this is a term you need to understand because if you don't, you won't know how to hook these things up. Uh, huh? Well, not really. It's just a, uh, if, when you hook up an input, if you hook it up wrong, odds are it's not going to hurt anything. It just won't work. So what we have is uh, we have something called syncing and sourcing. Have y'all heard of those terms? You know, by George, if you you should have, because you can't connect. So what's the difference? If I was to come over here and it all deals with current flow, but if I was to come over here and take a push button and connect it to power, okay. Well, what's the side? What do I need to get this current to flow? What's it looking for? I'm looking for a common somewhere, right? So what we do is we'd come over here, and here's my PLC right here, and it's going to have a resistor in there. 
and it's going to and this right here is going to be connected to common so over here we're using a we're using a a a ground we're using the minus as the common up here on all my push buttons so this push button would come over here and it would go to another push button and then this would go then this would go over here and go over to another push button So what are the push buttons using? Well, the push button's using the plus as its common. The PLC, all the PLC inputs are going to be using the minus as the common. This is DC. AC, there's no such thing as seeking and sourcing on, a, on AC, because AC has no polarity, right? You understand? It. But DC has a polarity. So since the PLC input supplies the ground, we say it's sinking. Well, if the PL sinks, then my sensors are going to have to do what? They're going to have to use a positive common, which means they're going to have to source. So these Siemens PLCs over here, those inputs are sinking inputs. So that means my, P, my, my switch has to be hooked up to power, right? You understand. So my plus, but uh, that's one thing you've got to know about the PLC. Some PLCs, you can change that. Uh, these Siemens PLCs, you can't. Uh, if you go over there and you're dealing with, uh, when you take, uh, if you take intro to PLCs, go back and look at the 504s and you look at that input module written in plain as day, it says sinking on there. So on a, on a modular PLC, when you buy a port, when you buy a module, you, an input module, a DC input module, you have to specify either what? Sinking or sourcing. Uh, the Allen Bradley PLCs, we can hook them up either way, but you do in a group. Depends on what you decide is common. Uh, so, but the Siemens PLCs, the inputs are sinking, so all my sensors have got to do what? Source. So, when you're dealing with 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 solid state sensors, they're going to say they're PNP or NPN. Now, whether you understand that or not, a PNP sensor sources. Just look at that, P for positive, right? So that's the source. And then over here, an NPN sensor is going to do what? Sync. So you go out there and you you need to buy all these sensors, and you go out and buy 15 sensing syncing sensors, and your PLC is a syncing input, what's going to happen? It ain't going to work. It ain't going to hurt anything, but it's not going to work. Right? You understand that. So you need to know what your PLC uses. So the Siemens PLCs use syncing inputs and sourcing outputs. So it means all my loads are going to be connected to common, right, or minus minus DC, and all my switches are going to be connected to positive DC. So when we come back and look at that schematic, notice what's this right here. So here's positive right here. And what does it do? It connects to every one of the switches. Now, when we get to the loads, when we get to the solenoids, they're going to all hook to minus, right? You understand? Because the Allen, the, the Siemens PLCs use what? Use sinking inputs and sourcing outputs. So when you look at those ter uh, when you look at those terminal boards, it's got a whole set of them marked big pluses and got another one marked minus, and it's up to you to figure out how to hook these sensors up. So when I follow this switch down, it goes to terminal board what one dot zero. Then this drops down and goes to the PLC. It goes to module number one bit number zero so if i was looking at my p it's going to be d what zero then it's going to be dot zero right if i'm looking at my p my if i want to figure out where it goes to the plc so if i wanted to see if this thing is working then that's the light i would look for i'd look at i'd look at zero d zero then i'd look at the zero uh, the zero input right uh, most people go over there and start flipping and see which one uh, blinks Huh? No. 
the first one, this is the module number. Or the group, well, on a modular PLC, it would be the modular number. On the PLC, on, on these, it's which group of eight does it belong to? So the first group of eights would be called what? Uh, they would be called N 0, 0.0 through N 0 0.7. The second groups of eights are going to be called N 1.0 through N what? Yeah. 1.7. The third group is going to be called N 2.0 through what? N 2.7. And that's all the inputs. Uh, the outputs are going to be called Q 3.0 through what? Q 3.7. So on our terminal boards, they don't put that because they don't have to because if that's a 3 or a 4, we know it's an output. If it's a 0, 1, or 2, we know it's a what? <laughs> so guys, uh this is now we can identify these mag and these are magnetic sensors. Uh but I know one of these is a Hall effect. Which one's a Hall effect? One B one. Oh I'm sorry, and two is a what? One B two is a Hall effect. Three B one and three B two are Read. How do I know? Three wires. Reads only have two. Hall effects have to be powered up, so they got three. So notice one goes back to power, three goes back to minus, right? You understand? And then four goes to the what? Goes, that's the actual signal going back to the PLC. Now, if it had a two, it would be a four wire switch sensor, and it would have it would have a single pole double throw switch in it. Y'all have had PLC, y'all have had motor control, so y'all know what that means. So most of these switches only have one contact. So there's our sensors. So now I know if I'm going to look, you know, if I'm going to activate this one, if I'm going to force this one somehow. I'm going to come over here and look at input what? D1.0. Now, if I program it, I'm going to say DN1.0. But the way the pins are laid out on the PLC, the inputs are labeled D and the outputs are labeled I don't know. But I understand. You kind of look kind of confused there. When you program it, you're going to use N I zero dot something. Okay. Or here it would be D one. But when you look at the terminal, they're called D zero to D seven. They're called D one to D seven. They're called D three to D seven. I mean I'm sorry, D two to D seven. Makes sense. Yeah, sorry, that's uh, that's one little difference. Huh? Uh, the Allen Bradleys, they call the outputs I's and they call the outputs O, the, the Siemens don't. So notice there's little differences between them. So here's my selector switch. Our selector switch is it's a three position switch, by the way, but only two of them have contacts. Uh, so when you put it in manual mode, both the contacts would be open. If you put it in auto mode, then uh, the contact on the left, um, yeah, I'm sorry. If you put it in auto mode, then this guy would be made. If you put it on reset, then this guy would be made. And, of course, reset takes it back to the first position. No matter where it's in the PLC program, if you hit reset, it's going to reset it back to the start of the program. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. I got a Uno, or a Uno, little, really neat. It's got a, no, 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 we was, I was talking about Leonardo's and, uh, okay, so let's move on. We okay? Everybody okay? Any questions? Yes or no?
Okay. So here's the next one. Uh, so these are magnetic reed switches. How do I know they're magnetic reed switches? They've only got two wires. Uh, this right here is a pressure switch. Right? This right here is a photo photoelectric sensor. Now, is it diffused? Is it? We don't know. Everybody okay? These come down to uh, D0 through D7. By the way, uh, these... Uh, these are the communication between the two stations. So these, this is that DB9 or the connector up there. Uh, notice we got two things. We got two outputs that feed the next station, and then we got two inputs that come from the previous station. Everybody okay? Anything else? Uh, here's our e-stop button, which is not a true e-stop button. If this was a true e stop button, it would kill the power on the whole system, but ours don't. And it don't on the Festo, Festo don't have an e stop. Well, nothing on here is dangerous. So. Huh? The teach button on a robot is kind of strange too. If you hit the, if you hit the e stop on a teach pin, it, it, it engages the brakes on the robot. It don't remove power from the robot because if you remove power from the robot, it would cause problems. Yeah. Well, it depends on if it's got brakes or not. If it's got brakes, uh, they energize the brakes when you got power, and you don't need power to de-energize them. When you de-energize them, they just clamp down. And you can hear the ones that's got brakes on them. You can hear them. You can hear them disengage. Okay, a little different here. So uh, this is our what? Indicator lamp that indicates we're in auto mode, right? You understand. This is a cylinder that's got, it's, it's, it's got a solenoid activated spring return, right? You understand. Yes or no? Uh, this would be for a cylinder that's got double cylinder activated. And we don't have a spring return on that. Pretty straightforward. Are we okay? And of course, this is this is the uh, vacuum generator. It's a dual solenoid uh, directional control valve. And then this right here is a dual solenoid directional control valve. And I think this is all the prints for the. For the line. So we'll leave this up here and we'll go back and look at the electrical. Oh, we can look at the pneumatic. Can y'all see this? We'll leave it up here on the board. I'm going to pause this.